Hello, Dr. J here. We're going to continue our discussion on classification of signals. In this video, we'll talk about odd and even signals, and we're going to use Euler's formula to demonstrate those concepts. So let's look at even and odd signals. Let's say we're given a general signal x of t. What is meant by an even signal? Mathematically, here is the uh, relationship. If I'm given an x of t and I substitute inside the argument of t for minus t, their values are equal. On the other hand, an odd signal have opposite inside. So if I substitute t for minus t, the values of x minus t and x of t are opposite in sign. So I, we put a minus sign so that they can be equal in terms of values. Let's illustrate this graphically. So let's use the cosine function and demonstrate that it has the property of being an even signal. So here's our axis right here concerning our angle phi and for each angle I pick there's a corresponding value called the cosine of phi. So let's go th select an angle on the positive axis, we'll call that phi marked here and it has a certain value. Here we're going to start at the negative phi, and it has a value, and it turns out that these two values are equal. When these two values are equal for a positive phi and a negative phi, and their corresponding cosines are equal, then we say that this is an even function. Hence, the cosine function is even. So let's show that the sine function is an odd signal, satisfying this mathematical relationship that the sine of minus phi is equal to the minus sine of phi. We can show this graphically here where the angle phi is given here and it has a particular value of sine of phi. Now let's go in the opposite direction, minus phi, and it gives us basically by inspection negative sine of phi. So basically going in the opposite direction, these two values here are just opposite in sine, hence it satisfies this mathematical relationship. You may ask, why is it important to know the difference between an even and odd signal and their definitions? Well, when it comes to calculating Fourier coefficients, it can save you a lot of time. Because if a signal is already composed of only an even signal, then there's no need to calculate the odd signal, which we saw it was a sign. And if the signal is an odd function, then there's no way that it can be composed of even signals such as a cosine, so you don't have to calculate those coefficients. So let's uh, look at explore, explore these properties a little bit further, in which we're given x of t is equal to composed of a combination of an even signal and an odd signal. Now let's substitute x of t with minus t as the argument. When we do this, we have x of minus t equal to x e minus t plus x zero minus t. Now we apply our properties of even signals and odd signals and we see here that x e minus t is simply equal to x of t, x e of t. And same thing with x zero of minus t, we can substitute minus x zero of t using the definition of what we mean by an odd signal. Now I can take this, put it in here, x of minus t, x e minus t, and minus x zero minus t, just rewritten here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add these two equations. When we add these two equations, we know that minus x zero minus t is equal to minus x of t, so the odd functions go away. And then x e minus t is just simply equal to x of t, so these two, even, these two guys right here add up. So we have 2xe minus t, x of t plus x of minus t. But what's xe minus t? It turns out to be x of t. So now we can solve for x of t as x of t plus x of minus t divided by 2. So this is for the even function. It's composed of x of t added with its reflection, x of minus t, and then we divide it by 2. And that's how you generate your even function. Now let's look at the odd function. This time we're going to subtract, and you could see this time 
the even functions will go away and we add up the two odd functions since we're subtracting this equation from this equation and then this minus here in the odd functions will go away and therefore we add them up and now we can solve for x0 of t where we subtract or is the difference between x of t and its reflection x of minus t and then this is a subtraction and then we divide it by 2 and here's our result from earlier where our even function is instead of subtracting as shown here we add the x of t and its reflection and then we divide it by 2 so let's apply what we just learned about even and odd signals namely that an even function is composed of x of t plus x of minus t divided by 2 and we're going to use the famous Euler's formula, the amazing Euler's formula, where e to the j omega t equals cosine over omega t plus j sine omega t. And that's our definition of x of t. So it's basically a complex number. You can think of Euler's formula that this is the polar form for a complex number, which has a magnitude of 1 and an angle of omega t. And this is our rectangular form. Our x component is cosine omega t, and our imaginary, this is the real component, and then our imaginary component is sine omega t. Then we substitute x of t for uh, x of minus t. Well, in other words, we'll substitute the argument of minus t into the exponent here. So we have e to the minus j omega t, and again, j is a complex number, or imaginary number to be precise. And then we substitute cosine minus omega t plus j sine omega t. So wherever there's a t, we substitute minus t in each of these functions. So now we use the even property. We know that a cosine is even. So it's cosine omega t. And then the sine function is minus sine omega t. adding up this equation and the equation here in red we could see that the sine cancels and then we add up and we have two cosines and we have another form of Euler's formula cosine omega t which is equal to e to the j omega t plus e to the minus j omega t divided by 2 okay we're gonna do the same thing for the sine and get a similar relationship but this time we're going to take this equation and subtract it from this equation. And you can see now the cosines go away and then we add up two sines, giving us 2j sine omega t. And on the left side we have e to the j omega t minus e to the minus j omega t. And solving for sine omega t, we have another form of Euler's identity in terms of sines. So here we have sine omega t is equal to e to the j omega t minus e to the minus j omega t divided by 2j. Now the previous discussion will give us some particular insight into the Fourier series and Fourier coefficients in terms of complex exponentials where we use Euler's formula to generate our cosine omega t and our sine omega t. And what I'll do is I'll rewrite this equation as 1 half e to the j omega t plus 1 half e to the minus j omega t. And we'll see that these two equations are essentially equivalent. But what it says here is that this cosine function is composed of complex exponentials at a frequency of omega and minus omega, where 1 half are the Fourier coefficients for each of these functions. We call e to the j omega t and e to the minus j omega t basis functions because they can form of how to represent any function in terms of these two basic functions because we also saw in earlier videos that any periodic signal is composed of sines and cosines and hence any periodic signal is composed of a combination of e to the j omega t and e to the minus j omega t which are complex exponentials and same thing with the sine, we can 
rewrite it as shown, but this time we have the coefficients, instead of being real, they are complex or imaginary. So, but it essentially says that when we represent any periodic signal in terms of sines and cosines, they can also be represented in terms of complex exponentials. Okay, just one last slide. Just to illustrate what I talked about earlier, here we have x of t, a periodic signal described in terms of a Fourier series where we have a DC term and an AC term. And the AC term is basically a combination of sines and cosines with the fundamental frequency and its harmonics, NF0, and the weights are AN and BN, and these are known as the Fourier coefficients. But we saw that Euler's formula can be described in terms of a complex exponential for the sines and cosines. So we can simplify this relationship here, and we, instead of going from 1 to infinity, we're going from minus infinity to infinity, weighted by CN, multiplied by a complex exponential. So what it says here, this equation, is that any periodic signal is composed of a weighted combination of complex exponentials at various integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. Signing off is Dr. J.